Welcome to the Gallery of Dayak Iban Folklore. This episode is an Iban folklore called Danjai and the Ramaung Sister. Once upon a time, there lived a great Dayak Iban chief named Danjai. He was said to be the envy of every living Iban man because he had everything a man could possibly desire. Danjai lived in the longest longhouse that had ever been built on the land. The longhouse was built up on the hill, surrounded by fast land that gave Danjai endless supplies of food, such as rice, fruits, vegetables, and sweet honey. In addition to being a rich farmer, Danjai was an adventurous traveler. He went far and beyond the land, collecting valuable jars of various kinds and brass vessels that he displayed in his family apartment in his longhouse. He was also a famous war leader who had always been successful in leading the men of his village and the many villages around to victory. In addition to everything else, he was a very wise man. People from afar came to him for advice when they faced any difficulty because they held high opinion of his judgment. Danjai recently married a pretty young woman. She was the daughter of a longhouse chief. However, their marriage feast had not been held. According to their customs, when a man with high standing as Danjai took a bride from a good family such as his wife, the groom was expected to present the heads of his enemies during the wedding feast to display his devotion to the new bride and to show the world what a brave warrior the man she had taken to be her husband. With that in mind, Danjai held an assembly of the Longhouse chiefs to discuss his desire to lead an expedition against their enemies. They decided to start building war boats immediately. Because he had many slaves and followers, his war boat was almost finished within a couple of weeks. Anxious to finish it as soon as possible, Danjai planned to leave his longhouse before the sun rose and intended not to go home before the work was done. Therefore, he asked his wife to send him food for the day. His wife did what was asked of her. She prepared him meals and placed them in a little basket she hung over the left shoulder as she set off to the forest to find her husband. She had never visited the site where her husband made his war boat, but she was confident she could find a way, for he had explained to her how she could get there. Besides, not long after she entered the forest, she could hear the sounds of ads being hit on wood surface, indicating that there were men working not so far off. So she cheerfully walked on. Soon, she came across a pile of freshly boiled fruits on the stem of a tree. She could not help herself from eating some of them. They tasted so delicious that she collected what was left inside her basket. She told herself, Danjai would love to eat these fruits after the whole morning of hard work. The fruits will surely refresh him. Then she continued her journey. As soon as she met her husband, she immediately gave him the basket. Oh, Danjai, I'm sorry I came late with your food. Here, have some. Danjai was indeed starved. He started to unpack the basket right away. 
the first things he saw on top of the basket was the sea fruits. Where did you get this? He asked his wife incredulously. Oh, I found them on the stem of a tree somewhere in the forest. Take some. They're very refreshing. I know. I've eaten some myself. Upon hearing her explanation, Danjai, the bravest man on the land, turned pale. He was instantly gripped with fear and anxiety. In this land, there was a Ramau that was much feared by all who lived around. He had the appearance of a man, but at times would transform himself into a cloudy leopard, and then he would attack human beings and carry off their heads as trophies to his own house. The thing was, he never attacked anyone unless they had first done him wrong by taking something which belonged to him. So this Ramaum would leave tempting fruits by the side of the jungle paths and on the stumps of trees in the hope that some tired traveler would take and eat them. And if anyone ate such fruits, then he or she was doomed to be killed by him that same day. Although he placed many tempting baits in all parts of the jungle, no one touched his fruits, for all feared the fate which awaited them if they did any such things. After all, everyone knew about him, or so Danjaya thought. It never occurred to him that his young wife knew nothing about the Ramau. How come nobody had ever told her about the monstrous beast? Danjai caught a grip on himself and cancelled his wish to eat, hungry though he was. He hurriedly gathered his tools to head home. He told those who were with him about what happened, and all of them walked back home in silence. Danjai was busy thinking about how he was to avert the fate which awaited his wife. She was silent because she saw her husband was troubled and she was sorry that she had caused him grief. His men were thinking about what would happen to such pretty young woman when the Ramaun got hold of her. They were silent since the intended victim was walking among them. As soon as they arrived home, Danjai called all the men in the longhouse and told them what happened. He begged them to help him protect his wife from the Ramau, who would come to take her head. As agreed, all the men got their knives and spears sharpened to anticipate the Ramau's attack. They positioned themselves at the porch, the top of the lang ladder, the roof of the house, and every possible entrance to the longhouse. As for Danjai's wife, they hid her underneath a pile of mats and sheets, surrounded by twelve brave men, armed with swords, ready to sacrifice their lives to protect her. Not long after the sunset, they could hear the roar of a leopard from a distance. Fear crept into everyone's heart, but they strengthened their resolution upon facing the fearsome beast. Then another roar was heard. This time it was nearer. All men tightened their holds on their weapons. The third roar was heard on top of the longhouse roof, followed by a loud crash through the leaf thatched roof. They could hear a big thud landed inside Danjai's family apartment. A great commotion occurred as all men rushed inside the apartment to kill the Ramau. Alas, nobody could see him. 
The next roar they heard was from outside the longhouse. It was a roar of triumph. When they anxiously lifted the mats and sheets which covered Danjai's wife, the only thing they saw was her headless body. The Ramaun was successful in carrying off the head of his intended victim. The whole longhouse cried out their grief over her lifeless body. How could such misfortune befall on someone so young? It was so cruel. They continued mourning for the next seven days. Everyone stayed in their own family apartment. They did not speak to each other. The longhouse went into a complete standstill. Nobody in the longhouse suffered the loss greater than Danjai. As great as his grief was, his desire for revenge was even greater. So, the very next morning, he left his longhouse to go after the Ramau. He followed the trace of blood that was plainly visible on the ground until he reached the foot of a mountain. The blood trail continued inside the cave, so he went inside without haste. The trail led him to the other side of the mountain. Once he was outside the cave, he saw a large plantation of sugarcane and planta trees. Beyond it stood a longhouse. As the blood trail continued to lead him, he was beyond doubt that his enemy lived inside the longhouse up on the hill. To be continued to episode 6. See you in the next episode. Your host, Indai Sampurai.